Welcome to a very special day and edition of BYU Sports Nation. It happens once a year, honoring the best and brightest within BYU athletics over the last year. For the next 90 minutes, we celebrate BYU athletes, teams, coaches who have excelled in the past year on and off the field. Yes, with no further ado, this is the 2022 Y Awards. Let's go! Awards on BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store. Now live from Studio C, dressed to the nines, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Yes, indeed, BYU Sports Nation is live for the Y Awards in 2022, as always presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Thursday, July 21st, wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the very sharply dressed Jerem George. I asked for the Bond, the James Bond. Uh, you went with the strong paisley blue jacket this year, bro. You know, I figured why not mix it up. Typically, you're the one wearing the loud jacket in this. So I'm yeah. like, eh, I'm going to go with the loud this jacket. This is this real year. loud with Paisley, though. Like, you're screaming at me. I like it. <laughs> why are you yelling I'm at me? I'm here for it. That's like when so <laughs> your jacket is when someone texts in all caps. Like, that's what I feel like right now. I think this is, what, the eighth year in a row we posted the Y Awards? Is it eight years in a I, row? I think we did five in a row with, with crowds, then COVID hit, and yeah. then uh, we've done the last couple here on BYU Sports Nation. So... This is awesome. This is really fun. And we have argued that this was the best athletic year in the history of BYU sports. You're going to see that throughout the show, how awesome this last year was. Yeah, it's one thing to win an award, you know, and be great at the Y Awards, but to do it in this year, there's something special. If you it. win a Y Award this year, you're super legit. Yeah. Our show lineup features a wealth of top-tier talent. The who's who and the current construct of BYU sports. I'm not going to tell you the specific guest lineup just yet because, frankly, I don't want to spoil anything. There's a spoiler-free environment. But I will say this. It includes record breakers, national champion, six-time All-American, siblings that are sure to entertain thousands, and more. Who's the team of the year? Who are the male and female athletes of the year? We're going to find out, but before we get to the awards, three headlines to mention from the last 24 hours. Puka Nakua is on the Blitnikoff Award watch list given to the nation's top receiver. Congrats, he about to have 1,000 yards. Mm -hmm. Ashley Hatch wins an ESPY last night for Best National Women's Soccer League Player, second Cougar ever to win an ESPY, Jim Fredette in 2011. Nice. Amazing. And Courtney Wayman took 12th in the Steeplechase World Track and Field Championships last night in Eugene, Oregon. Congratulations to all three. The first of many congrats today. So all rise and shout. It's time to hand out the Y Awards. And we begin with the 2022 Female Athlete of the Year. Your nominees are Michaela Coulihan Clough of women's soccer. Coulihan was named the top drawer soccer national player of the year after scoring 18 goals in 2021, second most in the country. Had 16 assists as well. Coulihan finished her BYU tenure with 53 goals, second most in program history, while leading the Cougars to their first ever college cup and national championship game appearance. What a year. One of the best players in BYU history, if not the best. Violet Zavodnik softball. She had 399 overall at the league in RBIs, hits, homers, 19 in fact, and route to a 42 and 10 overall record, 18 and 4 in West Coast Conference play. Unbelievable. Whitney Orton, who, by the way, won this category in 2020, representing 
cross country and track and field, became BYU's first ever female winner of the cross country national championship and did so by running the second fastest time in Division I title history. Six-time All-American along with teammate Connor Mance make up the first men's and women's duo winners from the same school since 1988. That was a fun day. And Courtney Wayman, track and field, another past winner of this award in 2021. She capped off her brilliant BYU career with her third NCAA championship, this time in the steeplechase, and made the final, as we mentioned, in the World Athletics Championships earlier yesterday. Shaley Gonzalez of Women's Basketball, the Player of the Year in the West Coast Conference, helped the Cougars to a program-best 26-4 record this past season, team's highest ranking in school history. Gonzalez averaged over 18 points a game and was named an honorable mention AP All-American. Miss you already. Kenzie Kerber, women's volleyball, the three-time All-American at Utah, made it an All-American season again at BYU. Leading the Cougars to the Sweet 16, she won West Coast Conference Player of the Year, leading the team with 364 kills and a handful of energy. This list is unbelievable. There's so many nominees here. <laughs> I love this category. It continues with Ashton Reiner of track and field. She won the women's javelin title, winning throw of 58.24 meters on her opening attempt, no less. The first ever javelin national title in BYU history and the first women's field title for the Cougars since 1992. So with that illustrious list, your winner is... Michaela Coulihan. Well done, Michaela. Tough to pick a winner in that elite group, Jeremy. Literally any of those uh, female athletes could have won this award. This was an unbelievable showing from women's sports at BYU this year. I mean, there wasn't a weak link, and all of these individuals were amazing. Michaela Coulihan, I, th I believe, is the best player in BYU women's soccer history. Un Shauna Robach was prior to this. But that year and where they went and how she did it, unbelievable. Yeah, unprecedented. And she's the complete player, right? She can not do it all. A, not just a goal She scorer. can do it all. Now, I recently spoke with the budding professional about uh, this award and much more. Here's that conversation. Kayla, what a year for BYU women's athletics as a whole, from soccer to volleyball, cross country, women's basketball. I mean, all were performing at such a high level. So it's one thing to be the female athlete of the year, but to do it in this last year when things were at an all-time high, what does that mean to you to be the female athlete of the year in such an incredible women's sports year? I mean, yeah, wow, that's crazy. Like you said, it's been an incredible year for BYU women's sports as a whole, and to even be listed among some of those other athletes is, is humbling in itself. And so to be recognized like that, it's just, it's, it's really rewarding. And it just makes me happy to be able to have been in that, that stage and kind of be recognized with all those other amazing athletes. Well, not surprisingly, based on your year individually, you were one of the top players in the country on the Mac Herman trophy finalist list. Your team goes to its first ever college cup national championship match how would you sum up everything that happened for you individually and as a team yeah I mean it was kind of a crazy year I think because it was my last COVID year my my for sure final year you know season um it was kind of just like let's go for it last season um all in just wanted to give it my all and the team was really successful and it was just super fun to be a part of and I always wanted to I always said that I wanted to take Jed to a national championship and uh, I was really happy that we were able to accomplish that and make it there and play on the biggest stage. And, and it was just an incredible year. I mean, really it was everything with that team and those girls being a lot of my best friends. Like it was everything that I could ask for. We're adding to your individual accolades, obviously with this Y award and featuring you on BYU sports nation, when you're receiving those things and those honors are starting to fly in, how do you manage that and still kind of stay the course? Because it's easy to get distracted. Um, yeah, I think I always feel like awards are kind of just a reflection of how successful the team is. And um, when you have a really successful team, individuals start to get recognized as well. And so, I mean, I'm honored to, to be able to receive this type of award. Like I said, it's really humbling, but um, really it's just, I don't get these kinds of awards without a team that that makes it to the highest level and is, is successful as we were this past year. So it's really mostly a tribute to the team, and, and I'm just lucky to be a part of it. What's your message to the other finalists? Because they include a handful of national champions, notably Ashton Reiner and Courtney Wayman and Whitney Orton. 
Well, honestly, they're just as much, if not more, deserving of this award than I am because to watch all their careers play out and see the success that they've had has been awesome. And I love watching each of them perform at their different um, sports and and it's just fun to all kind of be playing at the highest level together in each of our individual sports and and really congratulate each of them as well for being finalists. How did you find out that you were the Y Award recipient? <laughs> uh, just now when you just told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic! Hey, we we leave the drama right for the moment, right? I know, you got the raw reaction, I guess. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Uh, everybody wants to know what's going on in your career as well. We know that you're playing with the United States Women's National Team, the under-21 squad. You're with the Orlando Pride in the National Women's Soccer League. Uh, what's next for you in, in pro soccer and with Team USA? Yeah, so it's kind of just uh, one day at a time. Um, we're in the middle of the season with Orlando right now, and, and – uh, we're, we're starting to get things to fall into place a little bit more here. And, and so I'm just trying to make any kind of, uh, you know, make any kind of adjustments that I need to, to be successful at this level and contribute to the team and on a lot of different fronts and wherever I'm called upon, I I'm ready to, to do so. And then with the national team, we have friendlies, um, we don't have, I don't know the specific date or location of the next one, but we just barely, returned back from Sweden. We played against Sweden and India. Um, and that was a really cool experience. It's really awesome. Anytime you have the chance to play with the national team and play amongst the best players in the country. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. Hope, hopefully we'll continue to be successful and, and perform and, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, eventually play for the full national team. Uh, speaking of the national team, this will be our final question. Uh, you're playing against Ashley Hatch, who's in the NWSL, Cameron Tucker, your former teammate. Have you crossed paths with them? And if so, what was that like? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Anytime you get to see a, a former teammate or, or a former Coug, it's fun to connect. Um, it's like you're playing against them, but you kind of almost are cheering for them at the same time. But uh, every time that I get to play one of them, it's super fun, especially Cam being my really best friend and, and really good teammate. Um, it's fun to kind of play against each other and we always are hanging out after the games and there's always seems to be BYU fans wherever we're playing too. <laughs> and so they always want to kind of get us together and take pictures with us or, or whatever. So it, it's really fun to play against them and see them and see their success as well. Kaylee, congratulations on all your success professionally. Of course, at BYU, taking the team to a place that had never been in the College Cup and the National Championship. And we wish you the best on your future pro career. Thanks, Spencer. I appreciate it. Kayla Coolahan Clough. Sometimes you find out when you talk to Spencer what the uh, news is about. You. That happens. <laughs> so that's awesome. We move on now to the Male Rookie of the Year. The nominees, we begin with Campbell Barrington, football, 6'6", six 295-pounder six, from Spokane. Or Barrington, the younger, yes. was a freshman All-American and started six games for BYU's top ten offense. Tanner Nelson, swim and dive. Broke two school records while competing in the men's national championships. He earned those milestones and career high times in the 400-yard individual medley and the 1650 freestyle. They swim that far. Fusini Traude, men's basketball. Foos started most of the season with injuries to veterans. Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward averaging 9.6 points a game, 8.4 rebounds. Highlighted by a 25.19 rebound performance against Pepperdine in February. You take that, Willie the Wave. <laughs> Ozzie Pratt of BYU Baseball, the West Coast Conference all-freshman team member, appeared in 48 games, made 39 starts largely in place of injured star Andrew Pintar, and was top five on his team in hits and stolen bases while batting 288. Nice. Kenneth Rooks, track and field, the freshman from Walla Walla, Washington. Onion rings! Was part of the MPSF men's distance medley relay title winning team in the indoor season. Outdoor season, he took sixth place in the steeplechase, first team All-American, just a year removed from his mission, Whoa. running the second best time in team history. And the winner is... Boos! Freshman from Mali started 21 games, 11 10-plus rebound games, second most for any freshman in BYU history. Spence, he's a huge part of the team next year. He is a starter for sure. He's the dude. He needs to be the alpha. So You think uh, he needs to be the alpha? I like that. 
He needs to be the alpha. Let's go. Let's no go, pressure, man. Foose. Let's go. <laughs> Giddy up. On to the assistant coach of the year. Your nominees are Nicholas Aranis of track and field. Nicholas played a significant role in a record-breaking national championship laden season for the Cougars. He coaches the throws for the men's and women's track and field teams, including the number one ranked javelin thrower in the country, Ashton Reiner. David Hyatt, women's volleyball. He was a major part of the Sweet 16 squad that only lost two matches all season. Cougars finished ranked ninth. Johnny Neely of women's volleyball, not to be outdone by Mr. Hyatt. The other primary assistant for Heather Olmsted in BYU women's volleyball in another top 10 Sweet 16 season. Steve Magleby, women's soccer. He assisted the Cougars en route to its first NCAA College Cup ever, ending in penalty kicks in the national title game. Todd Miller of BYU Golf helped guide the BYU men's golf team to a big-time resurgence and a heralded spot in the national championship round of Division I golf. He also coached the NCAA West Regional medalist Carson Lundell. And your winner is for Assistant Coach of the Year, Nicholas Aranis, okay? Aranius. Aranius. So it's all good. Tremendous, right? Ashton Reiner is a tremendous uh, athlete. It helps when you have an Olympian coach, right? Nicholas Aranius represented Sweden. Uh, obviously, he's had brothers and uh, family compete at uh, BYU. It, helps to ha it always helps when you have an Olympian coach. And then I Ed Eystone's an Olympian as well. So just chuck full of those. Guys. Yeah, just win, just win Olympic, uh, well, whatever. Not medals, but just being Olympian, right? Being Pretty Olympian. Much. Just being Olympian. You got some street cred, okay? Just be, being Olympian. Coming up, who has the best comeback story of the year? And we aim to please with our crowd pleaser award. See how that works? I this do. is BYU Sports Nation at the Y Awards. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Do not know the groom's name. I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is like share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy like helped us through things, like we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make a wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be like these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for a BYUSN play-by-replay as we relive the 2019 football win at Tennessee in double OT, noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We are live in Studio C. It is the 2022 Y Awards on BYU Sports Nation. Your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play is a little bit dressed up today. Yeah, this is uh, normally we're pretty dressed up. Today it feels pretty <laughs> fancy, so uh, let's go. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. Now for the awards given out to athletes whose enthusiasm and outstanding performance have given extra excitement to the crowds they compete in front of. We begin this next segment with the male crowd pleaser. Your nominees are Fusini Traore of men's basketball. Fus. Fus. 
Back for more, the man flirted with a double-double average on the season, 9.6 points a game, 8.4 rebounds per game, and excited crowds with non-stop toughness, block shots, and thunderous dunks. The key was his squat peak. John Stanley, men's volleyball. The junior had 10 aces off the bench, always created a buzz in the arena when he entered the match. Sometime I'd have my head down and look over, and I'd be like, I think John's coming in because the crowd is reacting. Great enthusiasm for that team. The Nakua brothers, Samson and okay. Puka, repping football. This is the immediate impact dynamic duo proved instrumental in leading BYU to another 10-win season, six power five wins, and a top 20 finish in the AP rankings. Their bevy of highlight reel plays, Jerem, lit up opposing defenses, cemented them as crowd favorites. 64 total catches combined, 1,100 yards receiving, and nine touchdowns. Zach McWhorter, track and field, once known for his viral video, if you know, you know. McWhorter broke his own school record three times and finished sixth and uh, first team All-American at Nationals in the pole vault. And the winner is, or should I say winners are, the Nakua Brothers. Oh, nice. Samson Nakua now joins us live in Studio C. What's up, Samson? Let's go. Samson's Let's go. here. My man. Very nice. Sure. How we doing, brother? Good. Congratulations. Thank Entering you, the you. ranks of Y Award winner. Now you're have we had a duo like that before? You're, you're I've been watching the show for 15 years. The brothers years. here. Yes. Now clearly the elite brother showed up for this, right? Can't make a baby special. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> so what does it mean to you to win an award like this and make an impact like that after just one season with BYU? Uh, honestly, it's awesome because it wasn't just me and it wasn't just Puka. Um, I think we fed off a lot of Kalani's um, energy and um, what he brings to this team and to the crowd and to all of Cougar Nation was something that me and my brother could feed off, even though we had a really good energy ourselves. It was something that we could feed off knowing coach is going to back us up, getting penalties, going around screaming with the crowd. And um, to come and do it one year was amazing. The crowd was unreal. Mm. Being Playing under the lights, under it was just a surreal feeling, and it was just awesome being part of this. You guys would celebrate by slapping each other in the head. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm glad I don't have a helmet on right now yeah. <laughs> to celebrate this win, but what was it like for you to transfer from Utah and then be on the BYU team that beat Utah? Emotionally, that had to be interesting. Oh, it was, I'm undefeated in the, the, whole, <laughs> the whole war. I'm undefeated, and it's been awesome. It was crazy when me and Puka first came and uh, thought about coming we we're like hey it's time for you know a new change for BYU there's there's something that's been going on like we got to be the ones to help you know break break it and uh, to come in and do it was it wasn't just us it was the whole team did it and then we balled out and it was just awesome I don't know how to explain the feeling it was just crazy and I was told that it, it takes a minute to learn a playbook right so certain plays in the Utah game they said, okay, Samson, you know that route. Go and run that one. And the touchdown you caught was one of those routes, yes, right? Yes, exactly. We were practicing all week, and they're like, all right, we'll, we'll see, like, because Neil was uh, main, the main guy for it and then ended up getting hurt a bit um, from the first game. And so I got to practice throughout the week with it. That's right. He sprained his ankle. Yeah, and That's then right. they gave me the opportunity, and Coach called, and I was like, I've been practicing. I'm ready. Let's do this. And right when um, I seen it was just one man-on-man -on -man coverage, I was like, I know I'm about to score, and it's about to go. be crazy. Right? How did you, about did that you coaching ID? and execution in right? that moment? Like, we know you know that. You can do it. Um, did you did you ID the uh, the cornerback? Did you know him? Yeah, I did, JT, and you, Ryan. And you knew his skill set for me. Yeah. You know, that always helps. I was like, play a little slow, dumb it down a little bit, and then, you know, burst out of it, and it worked perfectly. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so what is your favorite catch from the season? Because we're talking about the touchdown catch against Utah. You had the too small moment <laughs> against Boise State. Great catch for a touchdown, a long bomb against Virginia. What's your favorite catch from the season? It has to be Utah. That that touchdown against an old team like that, um, to come in and beat a, a streak like that and then have the whole crowd after come in and then – what is it, storm the field? Yeah. It was unreal. The whole stadium, <laughs> everything about that game, that touchdown was just yeah. absolutely unreal. I was in the press box trying to get down to the field after, and I could not. Like, I, I swear I walked around for half an hour. Oh, it took me like it was three so hours after the game to get back to the locker room. Wow. <laughs> I get back to the locker room, everyone's gone already. That's I'm amazing. Like, <laughs> three hours, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so uh, tell us about what's in store for you next uh, as you try and make the Colts squad. Yep. Um, tomorrow I head out back to Indy, prepare for preseason, and um, 
do what I do best and just make plays and go out and help the team whatever way possible. So I'm excited for that. I've been training and ready. And uh, I've had guys here at BYU helping me, preparing to get back there. And then my older siblings helping me too. So it's been really fun. I'm excited to make it happen. Let's go. That, that's dedication on your part, knowing what's uh, in store for you tomorrow to come in and do this show. Yeah, Be we appreciate live. it, man. And oh, best of luck you. in Indy. Yes, Let's sir. Go. Thank you guys for having me. Let's go, Cougar Nation. Samson Austin Nakua. Holly, and now Samson Nakua with the Colts. Let's go. Let's, yeah. let's go. Yeah. The let's Nakua go. brothers. I mean, we should give Puka a little bit of love. Too. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, he's the one celebrating, stopping me in the head. I'm a little concussed from it, but <laughs> thankfully he's not here to hit me in the head. Yeah, he's uh, he's just practicing with the team. He's whatever. Pra- he's yeah, we'll, whatever. That's we will crazy. allow it. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Samson. Samson. Congratulations, man. Thank you, guys. Okay, Thank now you. for the female crowd pleaser of the year. Here are the nominees. Right. Violet Zavodnik, so good. She's up for another award. Mm-hmm. Had a 19 homer sound with the softball team. Led the league in RBI, hits and homers. West Coast Conference Player of the Year, right? Well, she got the shaft. We all know she's the best player in the world. Malarkey! She's one of the top 50 players in the country as well. Paisley Harding, women's basketball, set a BYU school record for games played at 146, finished number six in history of the program, mm. with almost 2,000 points scored, averaged over 17 per game last season. All West Coast Conference first team honors for the third straight year, helping BYU to a 26-4 record and a six seed in the NCAA tournament. Cameron Tucker, women's soccer, the super senior scored 16 goals, eight assists to earn third team All-American en route to the national championship game. She tied a school record with four goals, four goals. against St. Mary's. And the winner is Cameron Tucker. Yes, Cam. Cameron Tucker. Her most important goal was the winner at top seed Virginia in Sweet 16, the team that knocked the Cougars out the year before. That was a great goal, one that rocketed BYU to a surprise home game in the Elite Eight against South Carolina before going to the College Cup. Heck of a run. Big-time goal scorer. It was great to have two superstars for BYU women's soccer. And now they're both playing professionally in the National Women's Soccer League, joining Ashley Hatch. Gotham FC, like the coolest name of that any is really sports cool. team in the world. All right, let's roll out the 2022 BYU Comeback Athlete of the Year. Your nominees are Cassidy Smith, women's soccer. The seventh-year senior overcame yep. and fought through a rash of injuries to play an instrumental part in making history for that team. She net-minded for the Cougars en route to a first-ever College Cup and National Championship appearance, including making a stop in the shootout with Santa Clara to send the Cougars to the national title match. Incredible stuff. Sadie Minor Van Tassel Gymnastics. The senior was the MRGC Gymnast of the Year, vault specialist, first team on bars, floor, and all-around, finishing ranked 15th in the all-around nationally. She did it all as the Cougars went to NCAA region. Cole Gamble of BYU Baseball returned from injury in 2022 to appear in 33 games total, hit six home runs, drove in 29 runs, and helped BYU back into the West Coast Conference postseason tournament for the first time since 2019. Anik Hutchkovich, women's golf. She had six top 15 finishes, including win at the Texas State Invitational, runner-up of the West Coast Conference Championships, as the Cougars went to NCAA Regionals again. Ashton Reiner, track and field. She's making another appearance on a nominee list after her Javelin National Championship in Eugene, Oregon. Again, she's the first ever Javelin National title winner in BYU history. Represents the first women's field title for the Cougars since 1992. And the winner is Ashton Reiner. Why not? You won a national championship. Let's just go ahead and add a Y award to that. I would think you get a Y award automatically if you win a net, right? <laughs> like, that's just automatic. Well, it's been such a good year, you might not. Yeah, and, and what's awesome is um, she has several throws, right? But her first throw is the win that wins her the national championship. Yes. She was ready for the event. First throw, bang, Natty. Love yeah. it. Well, and again, her coach was uh, the assistant coach of the year, Coach Arrhenius. Yeah, so, Coach like, Arrhenius. There we go. That matters, too. Coming up, we honor the top seniors. And... The best men's team of the year. Who's it going to be? This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's go, baby. Meet Max, our newest addition to the White House staff. We are the first family, and we were hoping that you could help us out. You want me to babysit some Russian kid? Someone is looking to hurt both of our families, TJ. How is this even possible? An American falls in his Russia. Why should I be scared? You've got Max. This is your guys' song. 
You deserve our goal. Fifty thousand books in the hands of children. Okay, and I can help. Why do you do this? What do you get out of this? It needs hope, and you need to show that little bit of love. When you lay down your head. People come here one way, and they change while they're here. It was so great to be a part of it. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, that's contingent on our social team standing over here. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> Follow on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Now for the men's team of the year. Okay. Buckle up. The winner is BYU men's golf, Jerome. Men's golf coming in hot. Went to the national championship. How about that? Yeah, and listen, they overcame a very slow start to the season finished on a wild hot streak, earning a spot in the national championship round, led by stars Carson Lundell and David Timmons. Things did not look good early in the season, and here we are discussing with David Timmons and BYU Men's Golf the Team of what the Year season. Award. What a Congratulations, Thank man. Thank you. Yeah, no, we're honored. Thank you. There are a lot of great teams at BYU. To win the uh, Team of the Year on the men's side, what does that mean to you and the team, you think? No, I'm just, I'm so proud of my guys. They work so hard all year, and we, we struggled in the fall a lot, but we were able to rally hard in the spring and finish it off right. What changed in the spring? Because yeah. we, we watched the team, and we were like, hey, this isn't the normal BYU men's golf team, and then you guys turned it on in the spring. Yeah, I know. We, we started off well in the, in the fall. We won our first event by, like, 20 shots, and we were like, this is going to be an <laughs> awesome incredible. year. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to smoke everyone. It's going to be good. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we just, like, the rest of the fall season, we couldn't really all show up at the same tournament. Um, and it like it really let us down. We we were kind of bummed, but luckily, I'm sure you guys know Daniel Summer has hopped on our team mm -hmm. in the off season. So I really think that was big, big motivation for all of us to kind of rally us and turn it on in the spring. That's quite the staff. Bruce Brockman, it, Todd Miller, Daniel Summerhays. Let's just yeah. say that's a power five staff. Absolutely. Yeah. Why was this team unique and special in your opinion? Yeah, I know that's a great question. I, I feel like if you look at the roster, most of us are from Utah. And so most of us grew up playing together mm. in junior golf. Mm. And so I feel like we just have a unique chemistry that most teams don't have where we all know each other really well. And it's a really good brotherhood. So I think we all get along with each other on and off the course. And it's been, it's been good. Are you the greatest BYU athlete who transferred from Westminster? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about Not even close. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. I think uh, you're, you're leading. Okay, so your season uh, low was 10 under at the uh, Cougar Classic, incredible. But shot a nine under at regionals. Which one do you like more? Ah, uh, man, that's a tough question. I mean, I love playing in front of our home fans. Cougar Nation's awesome. I love playing Riverside. Um, that was really special. We, we kind of do it unique in our tournament where we get to play with the teammate. Not in most terms, we don't get to do that. So I, I was able to play with one of my good buddies, Keanu Aquino. Mm. He's, he's been on the show. We love him. A walk-on? Yeah. It was the walk-on group. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, I was able to play with them in the Coug, and that, that was really special. That was, cool. that was a fun tournament. Okay, so you talked about some special rounds that you played. Is there a favorite moment you had from the previous season? Favorite moment? Uh, it's pretty hard to pass up at, at Stockton at the regionals when Carson tapped in to, to win it. 
punched our ticket to the national championship. That was pretty special. That's awesome. And By he the way, told us he didn't necessarily know yeah. that that was what that was for. Todd yep. Miller's like, I don't want to put that pressure on him <laughs> right here. Um, were, yep. were you all at that green with him watching it? So he, was, he was the last one coming in. Kay. We were all like right around. We finished on the on the front nine, so we were all around number nine green, all of our parents and family and friends. And you knew what was at stake? So yeah, all, all three, or no, no, I think it was just Danny and Todd. They both were with Carson in the fairway. And Carson was kind of, he was kind of feeling something different because usually there's not two coaches as a player. And he's like, <laughs> I, think, I think I need to, I think I need to finish this off strong. So it was really special. We like all rushed the green and it was really special. That's awesome. David Timmons of BYU Men's Golf is with us on the Y Awards, part of BYU Sports Nation. Now, it's interesting because when you look at that Stockton Regional, for one, they didn't get where BYU was located right on the flag. Did you see that, by the way? Uh, yeah, I think so, it was BYU, Idaho. So I'm so glad you're representing BYU, Idaho right? yeah, at the Stockton yeah, Regional. You took that personally, BYU, clearly. Like, we do have athletics. <laughs> That's funny you guys noticed that. Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. Now, when you are in that high-pressure pack situation and you're watching, I mean, obviously you played at an extremely high level, but you're watching Carson Lundell win that, you know, medal. Is there something in his eye that you can see where you're like, okay, it's, he's just different today? If so, what is that? I mean, it's not just one day. That guy, he's incredible. I mean, he, he's our backbone. He, if you look at how we finished coming down the, the spring season, he almost won every single tournament. So we're, we're so grateful to have him and all the work he does. He's, he's been really special to have on the team. What's the future like for this group? Because you guys have a standard of getting to the NCAA Regional and to the championships. You've got your own facility now out at Fox Hollow, which is cool. Yep. What's life like like uh, for this program right now? Yeah, I know we're fortunate. Everyone's coming back on the team. We're, we're getting a new guy coming in from South Africa. Um, oh, very nice. So, yeah, we, we, we got a good squad coming up this year. We're, we've got high hopes, big goals. We were kind of disappointed how we finished up at Nationals. Um, so we're grateful that we get another shot at Set Great Hawk next year. So we're excited to get back there. Are you a beanie on a hat guy? We just saw a photo there. No, of that's like a cold day. <laughs> that was like a, a unique that's look. A cool pond -ish pond -ish it's cool. Right it's all cold, yeah, right? You can have that look. That's yeah, there it is. The beanie on the hat guy. By the you way, off. we played in the corporate sponsorship tournament uh, Tuesday, and Max Brinchley was out there, dude. That, that's. That ball moves off his uh, club different. Yeah, he's was a, a lefty. He's a football player that plays golf. Yeah. Seriously, he's he's big. Yeah, he's I big was surprised. Dude. Yeah, for sure. Is it pretty competitive at practice, by the way, between you guys? It's like I feel like it's a it's a good mixture of competition and and like friendly rivalry. I mean, we yeah. definitely want to beat each other's guts out in practice. <laughs> Afterwards, we're we're all good buddies. Yeah. You know that's I, mean? I want to destroy well. you yeah. on the scorecard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's how that's how all good teams are, though. You know, you gotta have yeah. that yep. team competition. Yep. David Timmons, BYU Men's Golf. Thanks for hanging Thanks out. Thanks going on, man. man. Yeah. Congratulations on winning Men's Team of the Year and being here. Thank you. Big time. Appreciate it. Okay, now for the Leona Holbrook Spirit of Sport Award given to the senior female athlete whose participation best exemplifies the true spirit of sport in athletics and life. All right. Here are the nominees. We begin with Maria Albiero, women's basketball from Brazil. I was hoping you'd go with the correct pronunciation. Londrina, you know me, was the point guard on the greatest regular season women's basketball team in school history, starting every game, ranking fifth in the league in assist to turnover ratio. She shot 85% from the free throw line as well. Cassidy Smith, soccer, she's back. The senior fought through just so many injuries, primarily a terrible shoulder and knee to help the Cougars make their first ever College Cup and National Championship appearance. And again, let's uh, go ahead and mention one more time that save in the shootout with Santa Clara to send the Cougars oh, to the national title match. Incredible. Leah Haymuli, women's tennis. The Utah transfer made the most of her COVID senior year at BYU, winning nine singles matches and four doubles matches as well. Courtney Wayman, track and field. You think she had a year to remember? Goodness. Capped off an incredible BYU career. Third NCAA championship, this time with the NCAA steeplechase title. Both in the world last night. How about that? And the winner is Cassidy Smith. Oh, well deserved. Women's soccer. You mentioned her shoulder. It would routinely pop out pregame. Yeah, in -game. Just, just pop it back just in. Pop We're back good. In. We're good. Seventh year senior. After the South Carolina win in the Elite Eight, I told her. I know you've been through a ton, but I want you to know that all of that was so that you could be the goalie that was the first to help BYU get to the 
NCAA college. To make cup. history. Like, hopefully, it was worth it for you because that sacrifice was significant. Yes, I mean, the physical was, and emotional toll of those injuries. Yeah. Not to mention the pressure of being in those huge games. Seven shutouts last year. She's a triplet. Fun story. Just incredible person. And congratulations on the win. Well done. Now for the Dale R. McCann Spirit of Sport Award given to the senior male athlete whose participation best exemplifies the true spirit of sport in athletics and life. The nominees are James Empey of football. He anchored a BYU offensive line that plowed their way to 10-plus wins for a second straight season. The acclaimed center has worked in lockstep with quarterback Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall, not to mention road grading for running back Tyler Algier as he made history for most rushing yards in a single season. John Stanley, men's volleyball. Ten aces off the bench, as we mentioned. A bundle of energy anytime he came into the match. Played outside hitter several games as well. Great teammate, crowd pleaser as well. Javier Nicolas Mata earned the MPSF Men's Swimmer of the Year title at the 2022 MPSF Championships, earned two wins in his individual events, in addition to swimming on three winning relays. He also recorded an MPSF season best time in the 100-yard fly with a 46.59 second time. These are the only photos we will show of anyone breathing. And Mitch McIntyre, baseball, the super senior from Stansbury Park, Utah. Shout out to Zane Anderson, was so versatile as a highlight making outfielder and left handed pitcher as well. He had 247 uh, with a team high 17 doubles and a perfect 10 for 10 in stolen base. And your winner is Dell R. McCann Spirit of Sport Award, John Stanley. John Stanley is so fun to watch, so energetic. You can't be in a bad mood when you see John. Oh, by the way, Dale R. McCann is Dave McCann's dad who yes. passed away a long time ago. So shout out to the McCann family. Yeah, ace ace in your face is what I think of <laughs> when I think of John Stanley. He's such a weapon. He's got this <laughs> unique serve. He's so fun. Excited to watch him next year. Okay, coming up, we celebrate the BYUers doing good in the community. And we highlight the top seniors in 2022 BYU sports. The Y Awards continues on BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Long live the Beat Digger logo. Smash that BYU Sports Nation subscribe button on YouTube today to get the latest interviews, opinions, and shows, baby. Don't just punch the button. Smash you it. Gotta, you got to smash it. Welcome back to the Y Awards 2022 on BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio C in Provo, Utah. It I'm not now. used to that yet. Studio C. Studio C. Yeah. I'm used to walking in here. I'm, I'm getting used to it because we did a few shows here before yes. you came back this from vacation. This is my second show. <laughs> or third? third? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, what? Where? Are we? From Studio C. Yeah. 
It is time for the Lou Wallace Outstanding Senior Award, awarded to a female senior who clearly demonstrated high athletic and academic performance and sportsmanship. Woo! Your nominees are Taylee Williams of softball. We know she's got nail game as well. Indeed. Had a heralded and resurgent senior season, helping the Cougars to a program best 42 wins, 17 game win streak to end the season, and a 13th straight conference title. The versatile star and pride of Mona, Utah, batted almost 400, <laughs> including career highs and runs scored, hits, doubles, home runs, and RBIs this season. She's the queen of diamonds. Shout out to the Mona Pond, okay? If you've been there, it's super fun. Michaela Coulihan Clough, women's soccer, after being drafted by the Orlando Pride early in 2021, she chose not only to play that spring season that was delayed because of COVID, but also the fall, and was extremely pivotal in BYU's chance to make the incredible run to the national title game it did. Herman Trophy finalist, perhaps the greatest player in program. Kenzie Kerber of women's volleyball, the four-time All-American. about that? Well, she does. Led BYU to the Sweet 16, also winning WCC Player of the Year. Had 364 kills. So many kills. Yes. Many against Utah. That was fun. And your winner is... Kenzie Kerber, who joins us now in yeah. Studio C. Kenzie, welcome. Welcome to the program. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. All you do is win. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like seriously. I think women's volleyball went 31 and two. That's 32 and two now for you individually. Uh, but obviously, when you came here, it was a big deal. Yeah. Coming down from Utah, we were like, we got Kenzie Kerber. Are you? <laughs> Thank I found you. Out during the Thank you, Kenzie, season. for seeing the light and yeah. the blue, of yeah. joining us in pro. Well, what's the past year been like for you? Oh, it's been awesome. I mean, coming down here in June, I was obviously pretty nervous. Like, I don't feel like I'm a freshman again, like coming into a new school, learning a new system. But, you know, it was just the dream come true. Like last year was the best year that I had in my college career. And I, I look back at pictures and videos like still to this day, like literally on Saturday, I was looking at videos on the plane and it was just so fun. That group of girls was such a blast to play with. Everyone loved each other. Everyone was happy for each other's success. And to play for Heather and to learn so much from her and to still have such a great relationship with her. Like we text and see each other almost every day. Like she's just become one of my best friends. And so BYU is such a special place. I'm so glad that I saw the light and decided to come down here. <laughs> on behalf of everybody, thank you yeah. yes, for coming down. Yes. It was awesome. So you've played on a lot of high-performing teams and enjoyed a ton of success, but every team's a little bit different. So what made this team different than the other squads you've been a part of? Yeah, I think one thing I noticed about the volleyball team down here, even when I was up at Utah, is like they just look like they love playing with each other. Like they just look so happy. There's so much energy. They look so happy for one another's success, and that was just something that I'd really never experienced before. And so when I got down here and after the first few weekends of games, I had – Whitney Bauer always, I'm so grateful you're here. I'm, so, I'm like, oh, really? Like, you know, other, you know, you're bearing other, a testimony? What's yeah, going like other attackers were like, we're so grateful to have you on our team. Like, it was just so different. I just felt so appreciated, and I was so glad that we got to work together, and the culture is just so different. Like, we, there is a culture that we all live by, and, you know, Heather does a great example at putting that at the top and yeah. that she doesn't put up with anything that is against it. And so I think that's what made our team so special. Oh, every, we know. She's, every she's transfer the, uh, every transfer needs like an appreciation week, right? <laughs> yes. I, I think this is a great <laughs> idea. Yeah, let's do this. What does it mean to win the most outstanding senior female athlete at BYU Award? There were a lot of great seniors. This yeah, year. I mean, it's such an honor. Like, I was here for less than a year and to win that award and to – I mean, make such an impact here. It's I feel so humbled by that experience, and I'm so grateful that people thought that I was, you know, a great fit for this team and helped this team. And all I wanted to do was come down here and play volleyball and play with a group of girls that were becoming my best friends. And honestly, like, none of the awards and the accolades that came with that season were on my mind. Like, I just wanted to remember my college career on a good note, and I can almost guarantee if I wouldn't have transferred down here, I would have remembered college volleyball a lot differently than I do. And so I kind of don't really look at the last four years, two years before that. Like I have only been looking at this last season, how special it was. And I think that that was a big reason. And so I just think the love and appreciation that I had to come to a program that made me feel special and made me feel happy and wanting to go to practice every day and wanting to perform my best is just what I was focused on. Yeah. Well, I think you just answered my next question uh, in large part, but I'm <laughs> going to follow it up just because I want to know how transferring to BYU impacted your life the most from a personal standpoint. 
Oh, I mean, the opportunities that I've had since coming down here is like unreal. Like coming down here and meeting the people that I met and, you know, getting involved with administration and now working here in corporate sponsorships and I had the opportunity to speak to PLC with um, you know sister Corden and it was just unreal like she chose me to come she was like I want you to come speak at this and I was like what like and I thought it was gonna be 20 30 people it was like 200 and I was like this is insane. <laughs> and like important people yeah right? I yeah. was like this is insane so just the opportunities that I've had to meet people that are you know high up in the church and just to create experiences and memories with people that are very strong members in the church has helped build my testimony and just mm. shown me so much more about how great everyone is down here and it's not like that at every university you don't have your athletic directors running up to you and saying hi and knowing your name and that's not common everywhere and so that was one thing that I really emphasized to the team when I left is like coming from somewhere else like what you have here isn't normal and you got to make sure that you are appreciative of that because I know coming in as a freshman it may, you just may think that everywhere is like that but it's not and so I think it just made me so appreciative of Provo and of BYU and I never really hated BYU when I was at Utah I always kind of liked it and so I just knew <laughs> that I wanted to be around here for the long haul yeah. and so finishing playing and having my pro season not really work out to be able to still be here is exciting. Sister uh, Corden's a homie, by the way. Yeah, we, we know Bonnie, we like her a lot. She's, a, she's awesome, yeah. right? Well, congratulations on winning uh, Lou Wallace Outstanding Senior Female. Thank you, appreciate awesome. it. Kenzie, Thanks. great to have you with us. And she works here now uh, <laughs> on campus, so uh, we'll see you around, it's exciting. Okay, now for the Ed Stein Outstanding Senior Award nominees, awarded to a male senior who has clearly demonstrated high athletic and academic performance and sportsmanship mm. for a second time. James Empey is the nominee. Let's go, football. Four-year starting center from American Fork, Utah. Helped lead the Cougar offense to a top-20 finish. In points and yards per game, he started all 41 games he played in. He was rated as one of the top centers in college football by Pro Football Focus. Connor Mance, cross-country, back-to-back national champion in the sport, personal best and course record in the 10K in Tallahassee, Florida. Connor's Beast mode, Jerem, constantly. It's hard to look normal when you're running fast, right? That left, you know, it's just hard. I just it's thought just that hard. he said, I just feel like when I'm running in race, I know that I have more inside, more energy than the rest of the guys. Like, I can suffer longer. I can suffer longer. Colton yeah. Yardley, track and field, the senior from Clinton, Utah. Shout out to Spencer, mm -hmm. was a first team All American, in finishing tone. seventh in the 400 meter hurdles with a time of 50.1. He's third all time with a PR of 49.6 in that event. Part of the MPSF 4x400 Indoor Championship team. And your winner is Connor Mance. Frankly, it's hard to beat back-to-back -back national titles. If you win a national title, <laughs> you win a Y award. Like, that should be automatic. So when someone wins a national title next time, let's say, and they just won a Y award as well. We don't know which one, but they're going to win. Yeah, back-to-back -back national champion. One of the greatest athletes in BYU history. Think about Seriously. it. Seriously. Who's won, you know, two-plus national titles? Courtney Wayman, Connor Mance are athletes from this past year. First been, American man to go back-to-back -to -back since 2008. Doesn't happen often. Whitney Orton, individual and team with Cross Country. All right, now for the Kimball Memorial Award given to the athlete who has the highest cumulative GPA among those who have lettered twice or more and completed 70 or more credit hours. So basically, you got to be an awesome athlete and be super smart. Mm -hmm. Your winners are Bella Felino and McKay Johns, both with perfect 4.0. How about that? I was just trying to get a 3-0. That's, un that's unbelievable. In this extended BYU Sports Nation, we give out the athlete and coaches of the year. And next, we highlight four athletes who are making the world a better place. This is BYU Sports Nation. You know that feeling where no matter what you do or where you go, you just don't fit in? If you learn them all, you can spell any word. Well, Josh, you think she's got a shot at it? What does it mean? That I'm not supposed to be afraid? Stand up and show them what you can do. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. 
and stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Wash all you want, don't drive dirty. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. You can download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe, rate, and please give a generous review. Let's get right back to handing out the hardware, specifically the Floyd Johnson Service Award given to athletes who have demonstrated uncommon commitment in giving back to the community, exemplifying the university motto, Enter to learn, go forth to serve. Your winners are Julie Sumption of track and field involved with the Athletic Connection, a program working with kids and sharing their talents, worked heavily with the Student Athlete Academic Center Service Committee and organizing nursing home visits for teams to participate in the past year. These are incredible, incredible people, Jerem. That's fantastic. Tyler Batty, football. He created and operates Edward Hands, a nonprofit that provides equine therapy for children with autism. It allows these children to have powerful bonding experiences with their parents. The idea was the result of Coach Ed Lamb from football and his son Edward making a trip to Batty Ranch and the experience they had. It's named after Coach Lamb's son. Trey Stewart, men's basketball, started his own company called Default Happiness to promote mental health. This is done through an initiative called Kindness Counts, which has three pillars to creating happiness as a default. We learn, we love, we overcome. And Gideon George, men's basketball, worked with Time Out for Africa and organizing shoe drives to send to his home in Minna, Nigeria. Gideon's shoe drives have sent over 5,000 pairs of shoes back to Africa. Incredible stuff from all of these winners. Congratulations and thank you for the work you do. Floyd Johnson, by the way, a man who served for a long, long time yeah. as equipment manager at BYU. In- instrumental in people's lives, uh, taught the gospel to uh, a bunch of athletes as well. Chris Merchosich. Uh, among them, so that's an awesome award to win. Brother that Jay, guy, right? That br- Brother Jay, that guy was awesome. That guy was awesome. Holy cow. And I'm so glad that there was more than one winner in that category because, frankly, those four absolutely deserved it. Yes, and this is something that isn't necessarily unique to BYU, but I think BYU does a great job of is the service, uh, the academics, and obviously the athletics. At the end of the day, we all want BYU to win. That, that's the thing that – that's why you compete. But it helps when you represent uh, BYU and uh, the faith-based values of this institution. So these, these people and others are doing that at a high level. Now, here's the good news. We've gone almost a full hour and have given out just a plethora of awards. But we're not and done And you yet. know what plethora means. I do know that. <laughs> Shout out to Three Amigos, 1986. If you haven't seen the movie, you should. Yes. Oh, we have 30 more minutes coming up. And another plethora of awards to give away. And there's some big-time awards to hand out, and we've handed out some big-time awards. But, again, what we've seen in this first hour reemphasizes what we've argued, which is there have been some amazing years in BYU athletics. We're talking cumulative overall athletic department performances. This, we think, is the best year ever. Yes. So many national championships individually, right? And, and what these teams have done and succeeded at a high level. Yes, certain teams didn't perform. As, like, men's basketball didn't make the NCAA tournament. But guess what? They're going to be right back there soon. They were the year before. They were the exception this year. They were the exception. Like, if football, men's basketball succeed, it feels like it all succeeds. It's much more than that. This is a complete athletic department. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, coming up, as mentioned, 30 more minutes of this program. Bonus ball. Free BYUSN. (laughs) As we have more awards to give out, including Coach of the Year. Does that include a bonus if you win Coach of the Year? I thought you were thinking for us for the extra 30 minutes. 
Well, that too. We're on salary, no bonus. The male athlete of the year will join us live on the show as well. Don't go anywhere. This is BYU Sports Nation, the Y Awards. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves. And we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. time working with so many groups around the world, we've learned a lot. I have really learned the importance of gratitude. African electrical systems. Well, I've learned that Kieran actually loves concrete. The power of cooperation. But above all, we've learned the world is a family. And fixing someone else's problems ends up fixing my own. This is the Y Awards on BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store. Now live from Studio C, dressed to the nines, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. That might be my favorite open ever, dressed to the nines. Yeah, we don't do that normally because <laughs> I'm in a T-shirt. Again, this is the Y Awards on BYU Sports Nation, celebrating the best and brightest of BYU athletics, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Great to have you with us for 30 more minutes in this 90-minute special edition. In the first hour, we talked to Female Athlete of the Year, soccerist Michaela Coulihan Clough, Samson Nakua as he, uh, he and Puka took home male crowd pleaser, and much, much more. Still to come in the next half an hour, we award the coach and female team of the year, but we start with another big award, our Male Athlete of the Year. Okay, let's go. And the nominees are Alex Barcelo, men's basketball, AB for three. One of the best shooters in BYU men's basketball history, was labeled the best shooter in the entire country this past season by ESPN's Jay Billis. He returned to lead the Cougars in scoring at almost 17 points a game and three-point shooting at 42%. He's currently with the Toronto Raptors Summer League team in the NBA. Davide Gardini men's volleyball. The Italian became one of only three players in BYU history to be a three-time first-team All-American. He led the Cougars in points and kills, highlighted by a senior career high of 30 kills in his final home match against UCLA. Don't call him Dave Garden. <laughs> Tyler Algier, football, broke the single-season record for rushing yards at BYU, 1,601 yards to be exact, 23 touchdowns on the ground to go with 28 catches for another 199 yards through the air fifth round draft pick of the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know that I thought Luke Staley's record would ever be broken, but there it was, man. That was awesome. Man Connor Mance, cross country. He won back-to-back -back cross country national championships with a personal best and course record of 28-31.1 in the 10K in Tallahassee, Florida. Is this, what, the third nomination? Yep. For Connor Mance. Yep. And the winner is Tyler Algier. Well done to Psycho T. We mentioned the single season rushing record. Jeremy, it's one thing to do that just in general, but to do it against that schedule, yes. six power five wins. That was another level. It really was. And it showed the country and scouts and the Falcons specifically what kind of player he can be. And yeah. now we get excited for Tyler in the NFL because this guy's going from walk on at BYU, a tremendous story to not just a scholarship guy, not just a linebacker, but a running back. 
and the single season leader, and now he's with the Atlanta Falcons. And now he's joining us from Atlanta to receive this award and give us the latest. Tyler, great to see you. Congratulations, man. Oh, no, thank you. No, I appreciate you guys. Well, we just talked about the incredible season that you had again, and I know you've heard, you know, all of the stats. Did you know like... you had a great season, Tyler? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was all right. <laughs> all right. It, it was, was okay. it was all right. Been better. Yeah, for sure. Enough to uh, help you win the male athlete of the year. But what does this award mean to you uh, to win it uh, among a group of just elite, elite athletes at BYU? Yeah, it's an honor. Shoot. Yeah. For, yeah, it's an honor. You know, just grateful for the, for the fans, for, for the, for everyone, really, for everyone, really, you know, my team really got me there got me to where I am and all the coaches as well. So, you know, just grateful for everyone who's been on that road for me, with me. You had a tremendous 2020, but then 21 was a different kind of schedule. What did it mean to you and what kind of challenge did you feel to simulate that and not just equal that, you actually bested it against better competition? Yeah, I think it just challenged myself really just like I did what I did in 2020, but now if I want to be better, like I need to be better the next year. So I really challenged myself just to really just break out, break out and do whatever I can to really just have a great season. Now, the Atlanta Falcons, we learned, kind of highlighted the Washington State game as the moment they were like, we need this dude. Was that game uh the most memorable for you, or was there a different game that tops that list? Low key, that, that one was a crazy game. I think the what was it, the six minute, and we literally just handed the ball off to me. <laughs> like, I, I, I was tired too, but I, I knew I had to finish the game. So, and then I ended up doing it, doing it, and then we ended up winning. But that was not not only was it me, but it was the whole offensive line and receivers just blocking their tails off. Really, just a, it was all a team effort. I think that whole season. It was incredible. They, you had to carry this team, um, and you got a first down and iced it away. I remember being with you in the film room segment the next Monday, and I said, did you jump into that guy in the end zone on purpose? And you were like, yeah, he was going low at me, so I had to give him a little something in the end zone. <laughs> what, what was the whole season like for you as you continued to pile up these tremendous performances and then realize, hey, I can be an NFL running back here? Honestly, it was more just taking it game by game. I didn't really think about because I always had questions like, oh, you're going to stay or oh, you're going to leave. But it was really just taking it game by game. You know, we'll just see what happens at the end. Every, like everything happens for a reason and then ended up making that final decision and going to the league. Tyler Algier is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Well, naturally, BYU fans want to know what's next for you. Uh, we mentioned that you're in Atlanta. So what does the immediate future look like for you as you begin your NFL career? Hey, you know, just like at BYU, shoot, you know, just got to just gotta do what I do. You know, just be patient, be patient. Whatever, whenever my time is to shine, you know, then, then I'll end up being ready to take it. But besides that, just taking it day by day, learning the offense and, you know, just getting ready. Are you prepared for an outrageously large bill at a restaurant as a rookie with your teammates? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm not. If I, you, you need to ask Drake London for that. <laughs> <laughs> Drake, yeah, Drake. Hey, hey, first rounder. How about you pay for this, right? I was fifth round. Let's go. No, exactly. Um, what, no, he's a great guy, though. Yeah, and, and a guy that we uh, we saw a couple years ago at, at against USC. Oh, yeah. Um, let's – and, and – Listen, he was injured in that UFC last, uh, game last year. That's probably a good thing for BYU. That's a tremendous player. Okay, what's it been like with the Falcons so far and kind of integrating into uh, NFL life? You know, it's different. It's different for sure. You know, you just have so much time on my hands and myself. So literally just having so much time, just doing everything for my body while getting ready mentally and physically for the season and for practice the next day and all of that. At least you don't have homework. I mean, right? Like you survived. Mm. No, no homework. What is what? How has that changed your life? Honestly, I'm not no homework yet. I'm still taking like a like a little bit of uh, online classes. Okay. So. Hey, good for you. So still, still a little bit of homework, but it's not it's not too bad. <laughs> hey, you getting paid to do homework? It's the playbook with the Falcons. What's an NFL playbook like? Oh, it, honestly, BYU really. Uh, Really prepared me really well for this playbook now so it's not as bad it's just different terms and a lot of mix and matches but besides that it's really good 
Tyler, I've asked you this before, but let's finish with maybe your favorite moment or play or win or touchdown, wh whatever that thing may be while you were at BYU. What, what's the most memorable moment for you? Memorable moment? Dang. Honestly, it was that high-scoring game against Virginia. That was actually <laughs> really fun. That was a real fun game. The, de oh, the defense feels fun. otherwise. <laughs> no, the defense is like, that was our worst one. <laughs> all, all no, about I think just uh, balling out with the offense, balling out with the offense and just doing what we do, shoot. It really showed a lot from, like, just the mindset of our team. Uh, Tyler, needless to say, we are thrilled for you and what's about to happen uh, in your football career in Atlanta. Uh, I'm sure you feel the love from BYU fans and uh, Cougar Nation as they support you, even though you're wearing black and a little bit of red. It's okay. This, it's is, okay. this, this is an okay right. amount of red for you, but congratulations. Uh, what, what a remarkable year for you. No, thank you. appreciate you guys. I yeah, appreciate Cougar Nation as well. Let's go. Tyler Algier, live from Atlanta on the Y Awards. What a class act. Man, he's still taking classes. He's still taking classes. Uh, let's go. And now he's in the NFL classes. Uh, he's got a lot of work. <laughs> to do. Okay. Female Rookie of the Year. Let's go. Who are the nominees? We start with Kaylee Faulkner of Track and Field, the freshman from Mesa, Arizona, set the indoor school pole vault record with a vault of 14-375 at the BYU Invitational. She also won the MPSF title in the indoor as well in the outdoor season. She took 26 at the NCAA West Preliminaries. How about the freshman phenom and beam specialist, a huge part of Guard Young's nationally ranked gymnastics program. She's one of the happiest people I've ever met. Eliza Millar, well-deserving nominee, Jeremy. Any uh, relation to Ryan there? No relation. Oh, we asked come her. On. We asked her no relation. Olivia Smith, soccer. The third-year freshman was on the All-West Coast Conference team and a starter. Highlighted uh, her season with the game opening three assist performance against Ohio State. She was tremendous up that right wing as a right back part of that team that went to the national championship. Yeah, you know what's wild? Like, as, as amazing as that soccer team was, they bring back just a ton of young talent again. Yeah, Smith, like I said, third year freshman. Uh, you know, redshirted and then the COVID free year, and then uh, she's a redshirt freshman. So there you go. And the winner is. Kaylee Faulkner of Track and Field. Well a done, Kaylee. A tremendous freshman season in the indoor pole vault. Bright future with the school record as a freshman in indoor MPSF title. Uh, hoping to continue to get even better in outdoor as well. She had a great freshman season. I don't know what's happening with our pole vaulters at BYU, but whatever they're doing, keep doing they it. They are flying. <laughs> keep doing it. Literally flying. It's keep big. doing it. Now for the Cougar Club Memorial Award given to the junior athlete with high scholarly achievement. We're going to leave out the drama here, okay? Let's just get right to the nominees. Dallin Vorkink of track and field, Jerem. I mean, the track and field program continues to put together high-level athletes teams, okay? It's, the list goes on and on. Dallin's just the latest, an incredible all-around athlete for BYU track and field. Yep, he's tremendous all around. Brigham Harrison, swimming. His name's Brigham, he's from Provo. Okay, this guy is about as BYU as it gets. We love him. Harrison set the school record in the 200 free relay, also part of the 400 free relay MPSF championship team. Casey Klinger of BYU track and field and cross country. He's just another portion of that unbelievable team that won another West Coast Conference championship. He's just waiting for his moments behind Connor Mance, right? Tremendous team, tremendous individuals, former Gatorade National Player of the Year before his uh, runner of the year before his mission. Casey Klinger's legit, man. Bella Felino, women's soccer, one of the great names in Cougar sports. A sophomore from California, played in all 24 games, nine goals en route to an all-West Coast Conference second team season. And your winner is Brigham Harrison. Because he's Brigham and he's from Provo. Oh, he's also an amazing oh, athlete. Oh, is that why we gave it to him? Congratulations. Brigham looks okay. like a happy fellow. I like him. All right. Yeah, all academic team as well. Back-to-back um, -back MPSF titles. That matters. It starts with conference championships. And Brigham Harrison uh, with 200 and 400, as we mentioned, tremendous swimmer. Congratulations to Brigham Harrison. All right. Let's okay, keep it rolling, up, man. We celebrate the walk-ons making a splash in BYU sports. Plus the coach and women's team of the year. Man, who wins the women's team of the year? That is a battle. Holy cow. This is the Y Awards on BYU Sports Nation.
Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. Every day, I help an animal walk again. Four different vets told me that he would never be able to walk. Here's his leg. Oh my God, That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> She wants to move and this device is allowing her to do so. This journey was almost impossible to get through. I just knew he would walk. I knew the obstacles that we had to overcome, but I didn't know how we were gonna put the pieces together to accomplish all those things. It's the hardest path to go down and it's all the more rewarding. You can see the trust. You can see the connection in her brain form. Just because you're different and you're not the way you used to be, it doesn't mean life's over. Every single step, it's doing exactly what I want. I knew we had to try everything. I think Derek's helpful mean that she has a better quality of life. It's a labor of love. You know, you don't give up when it gets hard. The coolest things have happened, so. Animals can lead you down a cool path. Best is yet to come. It is. It's only gonna get sweeter. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. We are live in Studio C. Yes, this is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play, -play, but with a special upscale twist. It is the Y Awards 2022. It's one of my favorite shows all year. I, I love it because we know there's going to be amazing people, amazing performances, and you, you and I cover all the sports of BYU, which is fun on this show and otherwise. And we get, to, we get to interact with these athletes all the time and these coaches, which is super special. So you look back at 21-22. This just reaffirms what I've been saying, yes. which is this was the greatest year in BYU athletic history. So BYU walks into the Big 12 two years removed from that. Now the challenge is that, that, isn't, that this isn't it, that BYU can continue to have great success. And I think they will. I think they will. Like, are we saying every team's going to do what they did last year? Not necessarily. Yes, and even better. And even better. <laughs> the hope is you build off that, sure. certainly. But these programs are in a great spot heading into the Big 12. And we'll begin the final segment of this Y Award special with our walk-on of the year. And the nominees are Noah Hain of men's volleyball, who played an unexpected large role, especially late in the season. 185 total assists, 25 digs. Jeremy just told me during the break, broke a redshirt season uh, in the a record in the final weeks to start a few matches, etc. Huge future. Could have said, no, I want to yes. not break my redshirt. Very unselfish move there at the uh, in the final couple of weeks. Nearly beat UCLA at home in a crazy match. He gave up his redshirt to do this. He gave it up. Very unselfish player. Jacob Bohr in football. This guy is fast. The speedy cornerback played in all 26 games, recording five tackles. Had that forced fumble right there against Idaho State. Uh, had five tackles against Washington State and USC. Also had a pass breakup against Wazoo. He's a name to keep an eye on. Uh, the BYU throws out there with tremendous speed and skill in the secondary. Sebastian Fernandez, track and field, second team All-American in the 800 meters, 11th place finish at Nationals. Wild story from this kid. One of our, uh, our very unique and fun guests on BYU Sports Station. Only current or former BYU track and field athlete to hold a facility record at the Robison Complex. Finished the season ranked number 20 nationally in the men's 800 meters. This dude, this dude wasn't even on the radar like a year ago. In March, he wasn't on the radar, really. Unbelievable. And the winner is for walk-on of the year. Not surprisingly, Sebastian Fernandez. I mean, just he burst should. onto the scene. Incredible. To go from I'm not on the team to complex record. Now, think about all the individuals who have run at the Robison yeah. at any point. <laughs> think about all of them. And this kid walks out there and throws up an incredible 800. I mean, his story is so good. One of, the, one of the best stories in BYU sports in the past year. And now I say past year. Literally the dude like four months in ago. In the past like, four months. Now I'm on the team. 
Now I'm going to sit at a complex track. <laughs> his team drove down from Minnesota, like his all over parents. the country. He has parents. Yes. Yeah, sorry, Steve. His parents yes. came to watch him run these races. And and the dude shows up in Eugene. You know, he, he so crushes great. it at uh, regionals. Amazing story. As mentioned, uh, very unique and fun interview. He joined us recently in Studio B when we were in Studio B. Back in B. the Studio B era. Before competing at nationals, told us about the journey that got him started to making the team. He had to make the team first and then compete. And uh, as an unaffiliated athlete, wild story, listen to this. I went to California for a track meet out there at the West Coast Relays, and uh, I ran 150.83 in the eight. And I was like, oh, shoot. Like, that's that was three seconds off my, like, previous time. I was like, wow. <laughs> so you, you beat your previous best by three seconds. Yeah. Went to work on Tuesday, and I was sitting there, and I got a call from him, like, BYU. And I was like, who's calling me from BYU? And it was Coach Eyestone. And I was like, cool. And he's like, we're going to give you a tryout. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and this is – and now, you had tried out before. Yeah. And not made it. Yeah, last year, because – I ran like 153.1, and then I went to the BYU meet, and I was like, "All right, here we go, last meet of the season. Like, I gotta like leave it all on the track, you know, because I was like, otherwise my season ends." And that was just, you know, three times to compete for one year of eligibility. You yeah, know? yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, I and, went. And you run a 147. Yeah. This this is the Robinson Invitational 800 record. Is that correct? That's what we mm. learned. Yes. Um, it's the facility a complex record. record. Oh, the, the complex record. You run a 147, okay, at the Cougar Invite, Woo! and then you do it again at the NCAA West Preliminary. And you go to Nationals! To punch your ticket to Nationals. <laughs> like I said, an incredible story what? as a walk-on. There's all these people who are training constantly to try and do that. He's like, hey, I'm not even on the team, and uh, I'm going to set the complex record. I'm telling you, that is incredible i'm just that, gonna run as not an official member of any team can you imagine while. in football it's like it's october suddenly someone just jumps on the team and then catches like six touchdown passes that would be in, that's what sebastian fernandez did in track and becomes an all-american <laughs> yeah. what like gordon hudson is that you it just shows no it's incredible uh, so cool all right uh jerem we now get to our head coach of the year the head coach of the year no noms we just go straight to the winner and the winner is Jennifer Rockwood well of women's deserved. soccer. Well deserved. When you go to the national championship game, you win coach of the year. Jennifer Rockwood does it. The only thing that was missing from the resume for Jen was going to the College Cup. And BYU did it. Got to the national championship game. Dramatic penalty kicks in both those matches. And she now joins us on BYU Sports Nation. Congratulations on winning Coach of the Year. That's a big deal here, especially with this year at BYU. Thank you. Yeah, it's a huge honor for sure, especially with the success of all of our coaches here, all of our programs. It was an amazing year, and we feel honored and obviously share this with my staff, with Brent and Steve and, and uh, Rach and Maddie, um, a lot of people uh, behind the scenes making it all happen for us. I haven't officially confirmed this, but I believe Tom Holmo has some sort of bonus for you in your next contract. <laughs> I'll, 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 hold, I'll hold you to that. I'm sure that was... I don't know. I, I've never heard of that, but hey, I'll Tom's take it. Tom's going to text me right now and be like, exactly. Hey, hey, stop handing out bonuses. That would be fantastic. I would hope a college cup was baked in uh, yeah. to the contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Sorry, I feel good. a little underdressed. I, oh, no. I had to come we, straight from the soccer camp. Listen, last day. You have a real job, Jeff. <laughs> you have to actually work, unlike us. It's true. But you guys we, look We just sharp. talk about you that. You look yeah. good. You look good. Have you come down from the accomplishment of what last season was and what it meant to you and the team? Because, like I said, that was the only thing missing from your resume was getting to a college coach. Yeah. No, I just, I just, I still can feel it. It's just that excitement. Um, you know, you work your whole life to kind of get to something like that, especially as a coach. You know, your goal is always to win a national championship get to the final four. We've been really close so many times, We've had so many great teams over the years, but a truly special season for us with some amazing young women playing and representing and taking us throughout that journey. And like I said, an, an amazing staff that's been extremely supportive of me and um, helping me kind of navigate through the COVID time. And think about it, COVID actually allowed us to put this team together and, and made this whole thing possible as frustrating as that whole situation was. So no, I think we're all still on a high. 
you know, we start our season in a week and a half, and uh, Wild. and everybody's just <laughs> ready. We're we're finishing our last week of camps that we've been doing the whole month of June and July, and and so it's fun. We get to talk a lot of it with our about it with our campers and kind of share that excitement of the season. And our players are all there, so I'm um, really really grateful, uh, really humble for everything that's happened to us this last year, and appreciate the, the the recognition. Yeah, this is the appropriate way to put the bow on last season. But right before you begin another yeah, we, new season, we thought about doing August 5th, right? <laughs> before the blue and white game, but we, we chose a couple weeks before. So, uh, I mean, obviously, you lose Michaela Coulihan and Cameron Tucker and Cassidy. I mean, so many just vital players on your mm -hmm. team. You're like, well, how do we replace all of those? But I'm looking at your roster that you're bringing back, and I'm yeah. like, they're going to be good again. Like, Yeah, what for you, sure. That's what, the plan. What's the key? What's the key to, like, continuing to just reload? Well, you know, we just make sure that we're recruiting the right kids um, who are fantastic players and – and, um, you know, of that group that played uh, in the national championship game, um, seven of them return. Yeah. And so we have a lot of experience, even though we were we were pretty young. We had this great senior leadership last year, and obviously they're a huge loss, but we have a lot of experience returning. And then you add an amazing freshman class um, to our group, um, who all, six, seven of the eight graduated early. They joined us in January. Oh, so wow. They trained with us all January, played in 10 spring games. And so I think there's a lot of excitement. Um, I think people might not be expecting too much from us with, with losing those great players, but uh, our goals will be the same. Um, we expect to be really good, so we're excited. Jamie Shepard informed us she's going to move from the 6 to the 10, the attacking mm -hmm. midfielder spot, um, which she, I guess, played growing up, yes. uh, she said. Mm -hmm. What kind of difference will we see in her game this year in a different position? Yeah, Jamie's had a phenomenal career for us uh, up to this point. Started every game as a freshman and a sophomore at the six. I think last year she was one of the best sixes in the country. Um, she has tremendous vision and composure. But Jamie is also is kind of a natural attacking player. We kind of had to reel her back a little bit. She had to sit in that pocket. Um, but I've, we have a lot of confidence in her moving forward. She likes to go forward. She likes to, to get in front of the goal. Um, you know, it, it is a big adjustment just because it's a, it's a whole different role, lots of different decisions that have to be made. She, she'll have a lot more people hanging on her, similar yeah. to what Kayla had to get used to her junior and senior year. There's always someone on a 10 um, and usually two or three people in your way. Um, but, you know, Jamie's our captain. She's our leader. Uh, she has the most experience out there, and um, we're, we're excited for her to, to fill into that new spot. Well, well-deserved individual honor for you and, and in an incredible year for just BYU athletics overall. And, and you guys, uh, you're homies. Like, the coaches are hang out. Yeah. You guys yeah. actually interact. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that that's extremely common. Maybe mm -hmm. it is at other schools, but you guys are friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have a, a great camaraderie for sure uh, with the head coaches. And, and for us, uh, you know, several of them came out to that national championship game, which that was, a cool was, photo. was really, really amazing yeah. to have and feel that kind of support mm. from, from all of them. And, and even during the regular season coming to our games and throughout the NCAA tournament to see those coaches supporting us. And we just have such great people at BYU who get to work with such fantastic student athletes. And so, you know, we just, I think we're all trying to do our best to, to, to raise the bar to be the best that we can and, and hopefully that's the best in the country and represent well. You're our coach of the year and it only feels fitting that we should transition to our team of the year award with Jen Rockwood. Which is set. women's soccer. Congratulations. Yeah. You wow. should be the team of the year when you go to the national championship <laughs> game. That Virginia game felt huge because that's the team that beat you the year before. Mm -hmm. You beat them there. Suddenly you come home for the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. And there was no chance yeah. that you were going <laughs> to lose that game. Like, there yeah. was no, ch uh, no chance. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Well, there were so many things that led up to us being in that Elite Eight because, yes. you know, the one seed North Carolina lost in the first round, which just never happens in the history of women's soccer. Um, USC was at home, and they got upset. So when we were at Virginia – even before knowing that there was an opportunity to return back to Southfield. Oh, you we, knew. We knew that if we could, we were going to yeah. do, it didn't matter who we played, that that, that that would be awesome. It was the Vengeance Tour, too. It was the Vengeance yes. Tour. Virginia, then yes. South Carolina. South Carolina knocked us out uh, Ashley's senior year. Yeah. We had such a great team that year and, and lost on a, on a PK 
um, and felt we, you know, ha were the better team and should have been able to get that result. But um, we took it to them. You know, great program and a great season. And but us on Southfield in that situation with our fan base behind us, forget about uh, it. We played some great soccer that night. What a fun memory. Well, a sincere congratulations from Thank us you. and from all of BYU Athletics to you as the coach of the year, coaching the team of the year. So well deserved. Thanks, guys. Thanks, really Jen. appreciate it. Jen Rockwood with us for the Y Awards on BYU Sports Nation. And that wraps up the Y Awards. What, what a year, what a show, what a fun time we've had. Uh, oh, my gosh. What a year, man. Yeah, our thanks uh, to all of today's guests. We told you it was an A-list lineup. And let's give a shout-out to DC Tuxedos for making us Absolutely. Nice. Chad's our guy. Right? Sorry to Dennis Pitta. No awards for you. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout-out to Shane Knight. A reminder, tomorrow... Play-by-replay special, BYU versus Tennessee 2019 football. Let's relive that one again tomorrow, shall we? Go Cougs!